So um, this is uh, Unit 5, Classwork 8, which is a continuation of the um, Augustus uh, um, candy uh, problem, okay, where he gets candy for doing his homework. Um, just a little reminder um, of what the sequence was that we were dealing with, okay, in this case, so originally, um, and to get just a text box, just a little reminder, if I want to just grab it without having to go to just a regular text, text box, if I just push six on, on Cami, okay. okay, if I just push six, then I get the text box. So um, the original one that we saw was 10 and then 20 and then 30 dot, dot, dot. Okay, that was the one he originally had, okay? And I'm just gonna grab this and highlight this, okay? Now, the one that um, he ended up deciding to change to was the following. So I'm gonna get another text box. So this is the one we're gonna be dealing with. So this was instead of him starting with 10 and then 20 and then 30, getting 10 more every day, he goes, okay, I'm gonna start with one. Okay, and here, let me just highlight this again, not highlight, but fill. Um, and then the next day he's gonna get two candies and the next day four candies and eight. And what's happening here is we're doubling, okay? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, we're doubling. So this one is arithmetic. This one is geometric. And this is the one we're going to do here, okay? So this is his new plan. So I'm gonna get, I, I'm gonna, again, use a text box. I'm using font 18, I'm gonna click in here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put day zero, return one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. And then if I want, if I click in here, I can grab it and I can, I can move it slightly if I'm not exactly perfect, okay. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to do another text box. This time I'm gonna do a number of candies. Now, day zero. Here, day one is one candy. Two, four, eight, doubling every day. Going backwards, half of eight is four, half of four is two, half of two is one. Day zero is half of a candy or 0 0.5. So here, I'm gonna put 0 0.5, okay? And then I'm gonna return and then one, two, four, every day I'm doubling, eight, 16, and 32, and so forth, okay? Now we are going to graph this, and I told you guys we could graph this on Desmos and then put it here. So I am going to um, get Desmos. Okay, so I've got Desmos here. And in order to get a table so it'll plot for me, I'm gonna come up here to the plus sign and I'm going to get table. And now I am going to put my values in. So I'm just gonna go down um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. And then here I am going to put in the values that we had on our table. 0 0.5 was for day zero, then one, then two, you can see they're being plotted there, then four, then I double that eight, I double that 16, I double that 32 and so forth, okay? And here, I'm gonna move this, I can see this. Um, now, if I want to see this a little better, I can come over here to the wrench. I can come here to the x-axis and here, I can actually put on the x-axis, this was um, a day, number of days. So number of days. Um, the y is number of candies. Okay, I forgot my F here. Number of candies, okay. And then here on my X, um, I'm gonna go from zero to let's say 10 days, okay. 
And on my Y, I'm gonna go from zero candies to, um, let's say 32 is what we were up at. So let's say we go beyond 32, let's just get up to 40, okay? And here we can see the graph, okay? Now, I am going to put in here an equation and this equation is gonna be my explicit equation. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a sec. I'm gonna go back to our, our worksheet. Okay, and before I finish doing the graph, I'm gonna come down here. They ask us for the 30th day, um, use your model predict. I'm gonna actually first answer these two questions so I have an equation to use, okay? So for recursive, okay, I'm going to get an equation box. So I'm gonna press seven, short key, right? Short key, seven. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna do a sub n. Okay, we're gonna do it the same way we did before. Remember is shift and six, okay? And let me just, um, I'm gonna stop share for a second. And just um, in case you didn't see the first video I did. So to get a subscript, okay, you're gonna do shift and the minus, a little reminder. And this is only when we're in the equation box, okay? Not if we're in a regular text box. Um, shift and six is always exponent when we're in the math text box. And shift and eight is uh, where the asterisk is, is a little, is the multiplication dot. Something else I showed in the last video, if you want a space in an equation text box, you hit the backslash and once you do, you're gonna get a little white um, box around the backslash and then the space and it will make a space for you. This is again an equation, an, an equation box. A uh, little reminder also, this one here is how you get fractions. This one here and then this gives you a space, okay. So let me share again. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do before I try to figure this out and before we get the graph, okay? We, we kind of put the values in, but before we get the actual graph, I'm gonna get back into my math text box and I'm gonna do a sub n, so shift and the minus. Okay, n, I'm gonna arrow out to get out of that, equals a sub, again, shift and minus, and then I want n minus one. Okay, so this is like f of n, but this is our new way of writing it. This is like f of n minus one, but again, a sub n, a sub n minus one. This means my first, my nth term, in my sequence, this is my n minus one term in my sequence, okay? And then to get out of that, I'm going to arrow, and now I can do what I'm doing the formula. In this formula, I'm timesing by two. So I'm gonna do shift and eight to get my times, and then two, okay? And I'm gonna fill this real quick, okay. Now, when we have recursive, remember, we want to know where we're starting, okay? So I'm gonna do comma, and then I'm gonna do that space. So remember the space, do the backslash, and you can kind of see the little white box around it. And then I do the space bar, and now I do have a space. And if I wanted more space, hit it again, the backslash, and then space, okay? And now let's do where we're starting, a sub one, okay, a sub one, and a sub one is one. Okay, so here's my recursive. To find my nth term, I take the n minus one term, times it by two, and to get this exact, this exact equation, this is my start, a sub one is one. Okay, now I'm gonna click over here. Again, I'm still in my equation mode, and I'm gonna do my um, explicit equation, a sub n equals, okay, and let me just fill this again. Um, so a sub n equals, and now I'm going to start at my one, my day one is one candy, okay? So I'm gonna go one times 
two because I'm multiplying. Now, when I'm multiplying over and over again, that goes in the power. Okay. So again, this was shift and minus to get it down. To get this, I did shift and eight for the asterisks. Okay. And now I'm going to do shift and the caret, which is shift and six. Um, and then this is going to be since I went to the first term for, I started the first term, this is an n minus one, all in the exponent. Okay, geometric, your n or your n minus one is in the exponent here. Okay, so here when it says use your model to predict the number of candies that Augustus earns on day 30, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 30 into this one, not into my recursive because I'd have to know my 29th to get my 30th by times in two. Here, I don't need to know my 29th. I just stick 30 in here and it's gonna do the math. So I'm gonna come here and I, I'm gonna go a sub 30, because that's what I'm finding. And a sub 30 is equal to one times two raise the power and now instead of n minus one, it's 30 minus one or really a 29, okay? And um, I'm gonna put that in my calculator. Okay, and here, let me get the lamp on for that. Okay, so to put that in my calculator, uh, I don't really need the one in front one times, but I'll just put it there so you guys see. And here, let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, times 20. And the raised to, this is your raised to a power, okay? And then you can see it's in that exponent. I can do 30 minus one and I get this answer. Now this answer, when you get an E, okay? It's not 5.36 candies, okay? This E is in scientific notation. That means that, oops, I put a 20, hold on. So it's probably not gonna be that big. Okay, so I'm just going to get this back again. I put 20. It's only times in by two. Okay, try it one more time. Okay, and I get a more reasonable answer. But just so you understand, if I did get this answer with the C, that is times 10 to the 37th power. That means I would move this decimal 37 times. Okay, but again, it was a two, not a 20. Okay, and so this is going to be the answer. Okay. So now I am going to put in here that number, okay, which was um, 536-870-912. So 536-870-912. So here, I'm gonna put some commas just so we can kind of see the size of this number. So this is uh, 5,536,870,912 candies. Um, and in the other problem, we had a lot of candies, but this is way more candies than that, okay? Um, so I don't know if this plan is gonna help with his diet. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my Desmos. Okay, and I want to be thinking about this equation that we wrote here, but instead of an a sub n, I'm going to write y equal one times two to the x minus one, and I'm going to put that into Desmos. Okay. Okay, so here I'm going to go y equals one times two raised to the x minus one. Oops, and so what you'll notice is on Desmos, I typed x and I did not arrow out and it dropped the minus one down here. So when you're doing this on Desmos, okay, I want that minus one up here. But again, the minute I, I type it, it goes back up, back down. So what I need to do is I need to put parentheses when I'm on Desmos, x minus one, and then it's gonna stay in the exponent because this whole thing is in the exponent, okay? So Desmos is a little different than Cami in that sense. 
um, whatever you type, it'll put that in the exponent. And the next thing you type, it drops down unless it was a number. Okay. But if it's, if you got like a sign there, so now we've got this and I'm going to change the color of this. Um, okay. Let's say I make it orange. Okay. So here's my graph. Okay. And if I want to get this graph and again, here's my number of candies, here's my number of days. And if I want to get this graph and put it on my worksheet, remember, come up here to share come to export image, and then you can decide if you like it in the thin, the medium, or the, the thick, okay? I think I'll do it in the thick just because this is a little darker, and then download, okay? And it's going to download for you, okay? So mine downloaded down here. I don't know if you can see it, but it did download. So now I'm gonna go back to my cami worksheet okay and i'm going to insert that okay um so i'm going to come to this add media my computer and in my case mine's going to be on downloads here it's going to be this graph okay and here's my graph and i can place it here and drag it there you go. And there's my graph. Okay. Now day two of this, okay. It's or the next page of this, sorry. It says Augustus is generally selfish and somewhat unpopular at school. He decides that he could improve his image by sharing his candy with everyone at school. When he has a pile of 100,000 candies, he generously plans to give 60% away. 60% um, of his candies away. So I'm, here, I'm going to highlight that. Okay. Um, he's going to give away. So he's got 100 when he has 100,000 in his um, pile. He's going to give. Hold on, I'm going to highlight it. Let me let me choose uh, this color. Okay. So when he has 100,000, he's going to hold on changing the color of this. He's going to give 60% away um, in that pile each day. Although Augustus may be earning more candies for doing his homework, he's only giving away candies from that pile. The one that started with the 100,000. He's not that generous. So he's not, as he's getting new candy, that's not being added into this pile. He has a pile of 100,000 candies and he's giving 60% away. And we want to know how many pieces of candy will he have, be, have left on day four, on day eight. Um, Mall amount of candy that would be left in the pile each day with a recursive formula and an explicit formula. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, okay, and I'm going to grab my text box. Now I'm just going to press six and it drops me to text box. I'm going to click in here and I've got it on 18 and that worked before. I'm going to see if it works again. Okay, so so um, on day zero, okay, from the start, he hasn't given any candy away. He has 100,000. So I'm gonna start with day zero and then day one and two and three and four and so on, five and six, okay? Now on the number of candies here, he's starting with 100, thousand okay and here i'm going to shift this over a little okay and he gives 60 percent away okay now we want to know how many candies he has not how many candies he gave away so i want to figure out not 60 percent of this but 40 percent of this okay so um i'm just gonna i'm just going to um grab a i'm just gonna click out here for a second and I just want us to understand, he gives 60% away, but he has 40% left each time. Okay, so each day that he gives away, he's giving away 60, but he has 40%. And so what you can do to find 40% of something, 
we're going to multiply by 0.4. That's what we're going to multiply by. Okay, we're going to multiply by 0.4. So I'm going to be multiplying by 0.4 for this. Okay, so I'm going to um, stop share for a second, get my calculator out. Okay, I'm going to start with 100,000. Okay, I'm going to times it by 0.4 and I get 40,000. I'm going to times that by 0.4 and I get 16,000 um, there. I'm going to times it by 0.4 and I get 6,400. Now that I've done this a couple times when you've got the graphing calculator, it will keep doing that for you. Okay, it'll keep doing that for you. Oops, didn't mean to clear it. Okay, so I'm going to get those back and we're going to put those on. Okay, so again, um, we were multiplying by 0.4. I put that on my calculator, in my calculator, okay? And I ended up, when I times by 0.4, I got 40,000. Okay, I times that by 0.4, I got 16,000. I times that by 0.4, I got um, 6,400. Okay. I times that by 0.4, I got 2560, so 2,560. Um, I times that, and I ended up with 1,024. And I times by 0.4 again, and I ended up with 409.6 candies, okay? And so that is what is happening. So again, he's giving 60% away, but he still has 40%. So I'm really trying to figure out 40%. So I'm timesing by 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, okay? So before I go and try to figure out this answer, um, because I can figure out day four, but I got to still figure out day eight, um, I am going to get out of that text box, okay? And I am going to hit seven so that I'm on equation or just click equation if you want. And so my recursive A sub um, N is equal to, and let me just get my fill here so you can see where I am. Okay, so a sub n is equal to a and sub n minus one, n minus one in that little bottom, and then arrow out. And what am I doing every time? I'm timesing, so shift and eight, timesing by 0.4. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And what am I starting with? So I'm putting a comma. I'm going to space, so I'm going to do backslash space. I'm going to do it again, backslash space, backslash space. I'm just going to scoot over a little bit. Now I'm going to do a sub 1 is equal to 100,000. Okay, that's what, uh, actually not a sub 1. I apologize. I'm going to start with a sub 0 because this is my 0. Okay, this is my 0. I know my 0. Um, so a sub zero. So now for my explicit formula, okay, again, a sub n. And again, I'm just gonna highlight this so we can see it and I'm gonna move it up a little bit, okay. So a sub n equals, and in this case, I'm gonna start with my 100,000 because I know the zero. So I'm gonna start with my 100,000 I am timesing that by 0.4. And when I times by 0.4 over and over and over again, it's gonna be in the power. So I'm gonna put in the power an N, just plain N. Why N and not an N minus one? Because this is my zero, okay? This is my zero. If you know your zero, then this is to the power N. If I wanted to start with my 40,000, then I would have put 40,000 here and then this would have been N minus one, okay? So now 
coming up here, it says, how many pieces of candy will be left on day four? So day four, 2,560. So I'm gonna get like, I'm gonna get a text box, okay? So on day four, he will have 2,560 candies left. Okay, on day eight, he will have, okay, and then this one I'm gonna have to figure out. So I can either keep times in by 0.4 here, or I can put eight in here, okay? So if I put eight in here, into my calculator, okay? So I'm starting with my 100,000. I am timesing it by 0.4, raised to the power eight, and I end up getting 65.536, okay? So that means So that means he will have about um, 66 candies. I'm going to round it up. Okay, it was a 65.36. Um, and again, I put that into my calculator. I put eight in here. Okay. And let me highlight that. Okay. Now here, they want a graph. So I'm going to go to Desmos. And I am going to um, put this table in and my equation, okay? So let me get to that. So I'm on Desmos. And I am going to come up here to the plus sign and get my table, okay? And I'm going to be adding in zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the ones I know, right? And um, this was 100,000. Okay, and I guess it probably doesn't like the, the comma. Okay, so just make sure you have five zeros. And then it was 40,000. And then it was 16,000. And then it was 6,400. And 163.84. And 65.536. So let's say about four, okay? And here, let's just take that one off. I think that's enough of them. Okay, so we've got these points. Now, I don't see any points now because I need to get up to 100,000, okay? So my X is fine because we had adjusted it to from zero to 10. I'm gonna come to my wrench and number of days and number of candies here. I'm gonna put number of candies left. Okay, and definitely needs to go up uh, way higher. So I'm going to go up to 100,000. Okay. And then you can see our points here and you can see that this is a decreasing graph. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to click and I'm going to put our, our explicit equation, which was y equal. And we were starting with 100,000 times 0 0.4 raised to the power x. And again, I'm going to change this color so we can kind of see it. Let's say I do this one green this time. Um, and so you can see our graph. OK, and wait, hold on. I think I did one of these. I think I skipped one of these numbers. 
Um, hold on, let's see. So I was noticing that this one is off because I did forget one of our values from our table. I was off by this one should be this one down here. So this one was um, from our table that we had on the other page, 2,560, sorry. 2,560. And then this one was um, 1,024. Sorry, I skipped it. And then for six, Um, this is 409, 409.6, okay. And now you see those fall through, all through. So um, again, here on our table, we had those values, sorry. Had it wrong when I was looking on my calculator, computed something else. Okay, and then here's our formula, our explicit formula, y equal 100,000 times 0.4 to the power x. I'm gonna come get this share export. I'm going to pick the thick version. Okay. Download. I'm going to come back to our cami and add, add media. And here it is for me. And I can pull it out and move it. And there's your graph. Okay. Now, the next thing it says is how many days will it take for the candy to be gone? Okay, so I'm going to come up to my Desmos. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and in and in. Okay, and in and in and in. And as I keep zooming in, what you'll notice is even though it looked like it was actually touching the x axis. It is not, okay, it is not because if I take, if I take, um, if I have 40% left, each time I'm talking by 40%, I, I'm, I am still gonna have a part of that left. So I'm never, ever, ever, ever gonna go to zero. So let me get this back. I'm gonna get this to here. Okay, and I'm going to adjust my y and x axis real quick. So here, I'm going to go from zero to let's say uh, a thousand. Okay, thousand days. And this one was 100,000 to, um, well, sorry, sorry, starting at zero, right? We started at zero, zero to 100,000. Okay, and I see the graph. Now, when you're looking at it, it looks again like it is touching, but as I go in and in and in and in, you'll see that it is not exactly touching. It is slightly above, okay? And so what's gonna happen is this is never, ever, ever, ever going to cross that x-axis, he will never, ever, ever have no candy left. Now, it might be slivers of candy, but it's not going to be completely gone, okay? And I'm zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. I guess it's not letting me zoom in anymore. And if you do see this, it is actually going to be slightly above it, okay? So again, how many days will it take for the candy to be gone? I get my text box. The candy will never be gone. Um, he will have slivers left, but it will never be gone. 
because even if he got down to like one candy again, he's going to be giving part of that away, keeping part of it, giving part of that away, keeping part of it. So he'll always have 40% of that, of whatever was gone, whatever he, he gave 60% away, he still has 40%. Every time he'll still have 40% and 40% and 40%. So it will never, ever, ever, ever be gone. And that's the end of this video.